here what we're going to do is we're going to look at buffers. And we're starting with just water. So we're saying water is right, H2O. So we got orange Legos are hydrogens, blue Legos are oxygens. And so we want to see as we're looking at this solution, <clears throat> how is our pH going to be reflected by the production of hydronium or hydroxide ions, right? So if we have water molecules, some amount of these water molecules will react with each other and one's going to take a proton and give us H3O plus and we get OH minus. So we'll have a very small amount of those present and relative to the number of Legos we have here, effectively, we can kind of say that we have one out of very small amount, like one to the 10 times 10 to the seventh of these would actually be OH and H3O plus. Now, if we have this solution, we want to connect this idea to buffers. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at in buffers, we want to think about how do we identify or what must be present in a buffer solution? How does it absorb the hydronium or hydroxide ions without a large change in pH when they're added to that? And then what is a buffer capacity of a solution? Now, as we're looking at these, there's a couple foundational things we need to have. First, buffers must contain a significant amount of both a weak acid and its conjugate base or a weak base and its conjugate acid. So important distinction here, why do we need weak acids or weak bases in their conjugates. We'll talk about that in a second. In addition to that, when we're looking at the fact that a pH of a buffer does not change moderately with dilution, so we add some more water, it doesn't really change the pH. In addition, we have the pH of a buffer changes only slightly when small amounts of acids or bases are added. And again, strong acids are bases. And again, we say slightly. It doesn't mean that there is no change. Okay, there is some amount of change as this reaction as we add these solutions in. And then our buffer capacity is the amount of moles of acid or base that can be added without causing a significant amount of pH change. So again, here, when we're looking at this, we're thinking about how are they going to absorb the addition of sodium hydroxide or how they absorb of the addition of like a strong acid like HCl. So first, let's answer the, uh, our first thought here. Why must a buffer contain a significant amount of a weak acid and its conjugate base? Why can't we use a strong acid? So let's answer that question together by looking at our solution here. So let's say we add in some acid ions or molecules, right? So we add in our acid molecules. And if this is a strong acid, every single one of these reacts. And so we see we have 100% ionization here. And so if we have this strong acid, what we notice is that we have our A minus, so maybe this is like the chloride ion, and then we have a bunch of hydronium ions. And this is why we'd say it undergoes a 100% ionization for a strong acid. Now what this means is if, uh, for example, I were to add in maybe something like sodium chloride to our hydrochloric acid. So again, here we have uh, this is maybe the sodium ion, and this is our chloride ion, our net negative ion of our, of our anion. So we add that in there, it's going to dissociate. And again, what we see here is that we still just have a bunch of these A minuses, or if we're dealing with hydrochloric acid, HCl. And so we see here, all we have are a bunch of H0 plus and a bunch of A minus ions. So again, if we're looking at a strong acid, we have maybe let's look at HCl. All we're going to have is H3O plus and Cl minus. And we wouldn't necessarily think of it as an equilibrium. We think of it as one way. So effectively, whatever amount of HCl I have, that is all in H3O plus or Cl minus. So if I add in some more Cl minus by adding in NaCl, all I've done is increase the amount of chloride, but I have not affected the amount of our HCl. So that's a, for the example of a strong acid. Now, if we have a weak acid, we would notice we wouldn't have this 100% ionization. Let's go ahead and take out our sodium chloride. We're going to go back to our acid solution. Now, the majority of it, this will be molecular acids. So they're all together. The majority of these will have been unreacted, and maybe only a small amount of them will have reacted. So maybe let's see here. We have, uh, looks like we got one. Uh, that has been uh, ionized here as we're looking at our solution. 
And then, or we got two of them here. So let's make it more realistic where we got maybe one out of these here. So what we notice is that we still have a lot of HA here. We have a lot of molecular, uh, maybe let's call it uh, HNO2. Okay, we have a lot of molecular HA in our solution. And we undergo this equilibrium. The amount that actually reacts and produces these is going to be relative to our Ka. So if we look at our weak acid, what we see here is that maybe we have, let's just call it HA as our weak acid. And it undergoes the same idea where we have an ionization reaction and we have this double way or equilibrium reaction where we give it H3O plus and A minus. And so now we have this where this is dictated by our Ka. So only a very small amount of ionization that we would observe. The majority of it stays together as our molecular HA which you observe over here with our molecular HA that we have present in our solution. Now this wouldn't necessarily act like a buffer because we need something that's gonna absorb the addition of a base and an acid. So if I have all these acid molecules sitting here, that means that if I add a base, they could neutralize those bases. But if I add in a strong acid, what I notice I don't have very much here that's gonna give us the ability to neutralize that strong acid that's added. So what we do is we need to increase the amount of these A minus. Right now I only have a small amount of these A minus. So I can do that by adding in some, maybe something like sodium A minus, so sodium nitrite or something. So we add these, again, this is our sodium and this is our A minus. We add these in here, the conjugate base of our weak acid. This is something that is a salt, so it completely dissociates. And now what we've done is we've increased the amount of these A minus ions that we have. Because we have more of these A minus ions, now we have the ability to neutralize both an acid or a base being added in. So we'll see here is that we're gonna have a weak acid and its conjugate base. So I'm gonna add in more A minus, and we do that by adding something like maybe NaAA. So again, this is our conjugate base and now we see here that's going to break up to Na plus and A minus. Now as we've done this we see our sodium here is going to be a spectator ion. So we have this spectator ion, the sodium ion that's not going to do anything, it's kind of just floating around and hanging out in our solution. Now that we see this is one of the reasons why we have to have a, a weak acid and a uh, it's conjugate base versus a strong acid because if I add in more of these A minus with a strong acid I'm just gonna have more A minus and I have a bunch of H3O plus ions, but I don't have the molecular acid So now let's answer our second question. How does a buffer actually absorb the addition of a strong acid or a strong base? So let's say for example, let's start with a strong base. So maybe we have here sodium hydroxide So again our yellow is our sodium our blue is oxygen and orange is our hydrogens. So if I add this sodium hydroxide, it's going to dissociate just like our NaA would because it's an ionic compound. Now if I don't have the ability to get rid of or neutralize these hydroxide ions, I'm going to end up with a really low pH. So when I add in these hydroxide ions, we think in my solution here, what do I have that's going to be able to neutralize it? Well, I add in this strong base we have these acid here, these acid ions here. And by having those acid molecules there, they could go ahead and neutralize away our sodium hydroxide to give us water molecules. So again, we have another acid. It has the ability to neutralize our hydroxide. Uh, and we, again, we have another hydroxide here, and we have this weak acid that's gonna have the ability to neutralize it. And now what we notice is that we've neutralized all of our hydroxide ions that have reacted away but we still have some more acid molecules, right? We haven't completely gotten rid of all of our acid molecules. And if we see here, we have the ability to absorb strong bases by neutralizing them with our weak acid present. So the first possibility would be where we go ahead and we add in a strong base. Now, as we've added in a strong base, what we've done is we see we have the ability to neutralize that by our weak acid present. 
So what this does is this will not change the concentration of hydroxide. And I'm gonna put very much, because we still are gonna have some change in our hydroxide, okay? Now the reaction that occurred here, let's again use our sodium hydroxide example, reacts with our acid. And this is gonna be a really strong reaction because our sodium hydroxide wants to get neutralized by this acid and we get H2O. And I'm gonna write these out separately from each other, Na, Na minus. So what we've done is we've basically traded some of our acid for its conjugate base. So we've noticed we've increased the amount of our conjugate base here and we've decreased the amount of our acid. But what we notice noticed, we still have acid and we still have our conjugate base. So this is the possibility where we add in this strong base. That strong base is gonna get neutralized by that molecular HA still present in solution. And this is one important reason why we need this strong, uh, excuse me, this weak acid to neutralize this strong base. If we had a strong acid, we would not have any of these molecular HA molecules present, and we would just neutralize all the hydronium ions. And so we see here that's not gonna change our pH very much. Again, we say that this is gonna be a small change in pH, and it's gonna be a small, and again, we added a base increase in pH. In our next video, we're gonna talk about how do we actually account for these calculations. But again, we're not producing a ton of hydroxide ions here, nor are we producing a ton of hydronium ions here. So we're not gonna really change the pH very much. The other possibility is that now what would happen if we add in something like a strong acid. So now we're gonna add in our strong acid here. When we add in our strong acid, what we'll notice is that when, we, when we're gonna put that in there, this strong acid is going to be neutralized by the weak, ba weak base that's gonna be present. So let's go ahead and say we add in maybe this strong acid and this strong acid, if it was just on its own, it would contribute this hydro, uh, hydrogen and create a lot of hydronium ions. But instead, what we'll see is we have this reservoir of these weak bases that the conjugate base that we, now we're gonna be able to trade basically the strong uh, acid that would be present in our solution. And we're going to create more of the hydronium ion. So we go ahead and we see here, now that we've made more HA and we've neutralized it, we've neutralized the addition of our uh, hydronium ions that would have been produced if we had a strong acid, because now we're just producing some more of our weak acid, which again, only has some partial ionization. So now when we add a strong acid, what we'll notice is it's going to be neutralized by our A minus present in our solution. And so that's gonna be, maybe we have HCl as our strong acid, and then we have A minus. This is gonna give us HA and Cl minus. So again, here what we're doing is we're trading the relative amounts of our HA and our A minus. We're not producing a ton of hydronium ions, nor would we be producing a bunch of hydroxide ions as this uh, acid here is added. What we've done is we've neutralized it and created more of this molecular HA in our solution. And so because of that, what we've done is we've gotten rid of or eliminated our HCl or our sodium hydroxide if we're adding a strong acid or a strong base. And because of that, we will see a small change in pH. And again, that will be a small, in this case, decrease in pH. Because we've added more acid, it would make sense that our pH is going to decrease. So now we have the ability to see how we're, all we're doing is trading back and forth between the relative amounts of our HA and A minus. And the relative amounts of these, if I have a lot of A minus and a, a small amount of HA or vice versa, is gonna tell us something about our pH. Now, the last thing that we wanna think about is well, what is the capacity that we have to absorb the addition of a strong acid or strong base? And that is this idea of our buffer capacity. And we think about what factors might affect our buffer capacity. So let's go back and look at our solution here and think about what does buffer capacity mean? We think about can we add an infinite amount of HCl or sodium hydroxide and still see this small pH change? We think, well, what's gonna neutralize it? 
we go back to our solution here, we got maybe one, two, three, four, five of our A minus, and we got one, two, three, uh, four of our H A. So what we'd see here, and again, I'm just kind of congregating these together so we could see what they look like. They would all be distributed in our solution. We see we basically could add, let's call it a mole each, one, two, three, four, five moles of base, and we can add one, two, three, four, five moles of acid that we would have the ability to neutralize with the addition, uh, neutralize by the addition of those strong acid and strong base, because I have the ability to accept protons from our strong acid with our base here, and I have the expect ability to donate these protons from our weak acid to uh, that hydroxide and neutralize that hydroxide. So we can say the buffer capacity here, let's say if I took out maybe some HA and I had less, less a, a minus here, I have less A minus, now I can neutralize less strong acid and I can neutralize more strong base here. Uh, or if I add in a bunch of A minus and now I got seven moles perhaps, I have the ability to neutralize seven moles of A minus, uh, of, of strong acid and still only five moles of strong base again depending on the relative amounts of these and so we see here our buffer capacity is limited by the amount of a minus or ha present in our solution and we think well what are they going to neutralize our a minus is going to be related to the amount of hcl or strong acid we could add. And our HA is going to be related to the amount of sodium hydroxide maybe or strong base, whatever strong base that we have the ability to neutralize. So in our example here that we look at right now, I have the ability to add, if we call each one of these a mole, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven moles of, of uh, HCl. So here our buffer capacity is where we could add seven moles of HCl then we would have the ability to absorb those seven moles. We have one, two, three, four, five moles of HA. And what that would mean is that I have the ability to add five moles of sodium hydroxide without a large pH change. And again here, without a large pH change. And here what we're doing is we're looking at how are we going to be able to neutralize the addition of those strong acids or strong bases. So hopefully as we looked at our solution and talked about our buffers, what we noticed is we got to have a lot of these ions present, the conjugate base, or a lot of our acid, molecular acids present, in order for us to have a buffer solution that we'd see. Because if it was a strong acid, we wouldn't have any of these present in order to neutralize the addition of a strong base into my solution. <laughs>